Yeah, there we go. So now we're all recording. Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, so I've got, I, this isn't too bad. I mean, we're going to, you know, look at code and blah, blah, blah. So it's not quite as much fun as being there in person. But um, one of the things that happens when I start sharing my screen, I won't be able to see all of you guys. So if you've got questions, just shout them out, you know, and, uh, you know, make sure and interrupt me. Um, we're going to do a couple of things tonight and see how far we get. Um, some of this is going to be uh, built in redundancy. We're going to create another terrain again at some point. Um, but the main thing that I want to start with is how you do localization. Okay. Because that's a kind of a big deal for, you know, virtual worlds. Uh, I do need to, to warn people who might be looking at this video later. Um, I believe that Zoom does not record audio in stereo on the recordings that they make. So you won't be able to hear the localization. Um, there's some good uh, demos and tutorial pages I'm gonna show you in a little bit um, that does have that included. But let's get right to it. I wanna show you how this localization works, okay? Um, it's actually, it's not, difficult at all you know we're going to be using those p field things and we're going to well actually in the first example i won't even be doing that well no we will be doing that um but i want to explain how the localization system works okay now you also have available to you um some other localization systems i'm not going to be covering those you'll have to look them up there's ambisonics which seth Kluid is a big fan of i'm not um and there's also built-in localizations for particular goggles that you might buy like Unity, I mean, excuse me, um, Oculus has their own localization system that you can employ. Um, so does HTC Vive and others. Um, but again, that's they're they're fairly complicated. They're they're actually very sophisticated. Um, what I'm going to show you works quite well and it's very simple. And it's also very good for moving sources. And the other thing that it does is when you move your head, it makes sure to maintain the acoustic image at the correct location. So that's kind of a big win too. All right, but it's a, there's there's one little trick to it, but let me explain how it works first. Okay, so let me uh, start sharing my screen here. Okay, and we're gonna say I'm gonna share sound too, just for the heck of it. All right, all right. Let me hide this. So you should see like, uh, oops, ah. Right, I can't do that. I just hit zoom and you all went away. <laughs> That's not so good. Okay, uh, what you should see now is a graphics sort of rectangle. Do you guys all see that? Okay, that I can draw on. Okay, I'm drawing stuff. Do you see the circle? Uh, or a novel? Is that, is that cool? Okay, great. I want to make sure. All right, here's how it works. Okay, um, we're going to, oh, excuse me, I need to get my tools out of here. Put them over here. They were hiding behind all of you guys. Okay, so let's put a listener right here. Okay, so he's got like ears. Okay, oops, that's a bad place for an ear. Okay, and he's got a little nose here. Okay, so he's He's a little bit lopsided, but it still works. Um, now let's place a sound source, okay? And we're gonna put it right here, okay? So that's gonna be some object that's going to be emitting sound, okay? The way the localization works is that it essentially takes the sound from the source and it calculates the distance from the source to the ears of the listener. Okay, this is called, it's a technique uh, analogous to what they do in graphics called ray tracing, where we're basically doing sound tracing. And it assumes a sound speed of about a thousand feet per second. That's just kind of normal things like that. So based on that, depending on where this is, it can calculate how long it takes for the sound to get to your, your ears. Um, you, a lot of localization that you do depends on that delay because if i put a if i put another sound say over here like this okay and then i draw the um the uh, the source going to this okay notice that the delay is different because it will hit this here slightly before it hits that here Whereas this sound source, it'll hit this ear slightly before it hits the other ear. So that delay, delay is called the interaural 
timing difference. And that's a big source of how you localize sound. The second big source has to do with the difference in amplitude, depending on, first of all, this is a slightly longer distance, okay? But secondly, it has to do with um, what we call the head shadow. As the sound source gets further down here, okay? And I draw the, uh, the delay times to the ears here, there, and there. Notice that this guy going to this ear hits your head. And there's an effect called the acoustic shadow, which greatly reduces the amplitude. So that amplitude reduction is also responsible for um, how you localize the sound. Um, the final thing that happens is that as a sound source moves behind you, okay, because of the acoustic features of your head, I won't draw in the, uh, the, the lines this time, um, there's this thing called the head-related transfer function. And that basically sources coming from different points in space. Notice that I'm doing this all in 2D. We're really only 2D at this point with our localization stuff. Um, but, uh, but, but depending on the location, you get a slightly different filtering effect because of your head. Now we don't use, ambisonics I believe uses a full head related transfer function. I'm not completely sure about that. Um, we don't, what, what I do with this instrument called localize is I kind of cheat and just do a very crude version of it so that when the sound source moves back behind you, it starts applying a low pass filter which is essentially what the HRTF does with the pin of your ear and things like that. So um, it, 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 like I said, it works pretty well. It, it does fully, you. you're gonna hear it in a second um, if, if everything goes as, as well as it should. Um, but that's, that's the essence of it. It just calculates these delay times, applies the delay, calculates the amplitude, depending on where the source is in your head and things like that, and applies potentially a low pass filter um, very simple operations, very efficient, works quite well with multiple, multiple sources, all right? Now, here's the trick, okay? You would think, well, here we are as the listener. For each of our sound sources, we'll calculate the delays that it takes to reach us. Now, that would be kind of difficult to do when you start having a bunch of sources because the listener somehow is gonna to have to like try to keep track of all of those sources, especially if some sources move off the scene or things like that. You know, we're gonna to have to notify this listener and the, uh, the amount of processing that happens just on the listener would be not, it wouldn't be a heavy processing load. It's gonna be a heavy administrative load to try and figure out which source is doing the sounds. So we do something very clever. It doesn't really matter where we calculate these delays as long as they are calculated correctly or the amplitudes. So we actually take <clears throat> the sound source and we apply the localization at the source, not at the receiver, okay? What that means is that we have to do this weird little subterfuge where the source has to learn where it is in reference to the receiver. And I wrote a little program that we're gonna use called Get My Transform. And the source basically looks that up here and that tells it where it is and it allows it to then calculate the appropriate delays. All right, it sounds maybe a bit more complicated than it actually is. You'll see when we do it. And in fact, let's just go ahead and do it. All right, any questions so far about, uh, about how this works? Okay, cool. All right, so I'm going to start up Unity and we're gonna do a real basic kind of beepy thing here. And then we're gonna work on some birds and simulating bird sounds and create a, a scene hopefully with all that, all right? So let me go here and start up Unity and we'll say a new project. Okay, oops, cancel this. No, no, don't cancel it, okay. Yeah, I just want to make sure I put it in the right place, which this is not right now. Soft fall, week eight. Okay, and we'll just put it right in there and we'll call this um, week eight unity localize one. Okay, so here we go. All right, We're firing it up. Here comes unity. Yay, yay, yay. 
Ooh, I got something in the chat. Oh, I guess it was old. Again, just yell out things. This is the one thing that's weird about um, teaching on Zoom is that it's just so quiet, you know? Um, I'm just kind of sitting here talking to myself and that's a little weird. So if at any point you want to go right on, Brad, or yeah, that's really good, Brad. You're welcome to do that. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That would be silly. All right, here we go. Unity's coming. All right. Now, can you all see the Unity screen? Okay. Hope so. All right. Let me, I'm going to move this over a little bit because you all are in the way there. Let me see if I can make this a little bit smaller. Uh, come on, come on, come on. Nope, I guess I can't. Okay. Uh, all right. So here we go. Pull this down a little bit. Okay, so there's our, our basic Unity layout, all right? And we're just gonna do the standard old stuff where we're gonna put in RTC Mix and get a beep going. Um, just for fun so that we can see where we're doing things. Let's go ahead and just add a couple of objects, okay? Uh, let's add, first of all, let's add a plane down below, right? Okay, there's our happy plane. Okay, uh, right. Okay, let's, um, let's take and let's build a, a little, let's just put a cylinder in there somewhere. Cylinder, okay. Yeah, and let's just pull it up. Put it back here a little bit, back there a little bit. Okay, we'll just kind of keep that. Now we're going to add a uh, we're going to add a um, uh, uh, an observer pretty soon here. Okay, but let's leave this for now. Okay, uh, and let's go get our RTC mix stuff set up. All right, so we'll go out here, grab our URTC mix package, put it into our assets, import everything. Okay, and we'll get the uh, that warning down there that we need to like you know. Do this nonsense here. Go to project settings. All right. Go to the player. And for some reason, this has gotten very small. Let's move it out. Okay. And we're going to go down here to. Uh -huh. There's a allow unsafe code. There. Now we're happy. Okay, and let's get some sound happening and see if sound actually will happen. Okay, so I'll go in here. First thing I'm gonna do is go to my prefabs and I'll take RTC mix and put it up here. Okay, and let's take our beep and put it there. Okay, all right. Now, uh, when I start this up with any luck, we'll hear it. Um, I am screen sharing and I believe I'm audio sharing too. Um, yeah, I did do that. Okay, hold on guys. I just clicked out of Unity and it disappeared. Okay, so here we go. Um, ooh, where did you all go? Hold on. Okay. Here we go. Um, let's play it. Brad, we don't see the screen. You don't see the screens. Yeah, something happened there. Oh my God, do you know what happened? I accidentally clicked off share screen. I was wondering why everybody disappeared. Okay, let me, uh, let me reshare again. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, share screen, share sound. There you go. Now you should see the screen, correct? Yes. Okay, good, good, good. Thank you, thank you. Okay, let me do this again. Oh, God. Yeah, did you hear that awful sound? That's the sound of Zoom yeah. being just a really crappy program. Okay. Yeah, that was unpleasant. Oh, Lord. Okay, uh, I'll be honest, I can't fix this now. We're just going to go ahead and barrel on through and uh, you'll still be able to kind of get a sense of how it works. Um, just, you know, when I play Zoom, just turn the sound kind of soft because it's all going to sound like that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, 
Yeah, if I if I if I try to start debugging it now, uh, the rest of the class is toast. So let's not do it. Now, the good news is that when we shift to max MSP and I start doing the bird simulations, um, that works well. So anyhow, uh, such is life. Let me just do a quick check. No, oh no, I'm going down. I'm going down. Okay, yeah. Once you go down that road, abandon hope. Okay. Well, we have like kind of annoying sounds happening. All right, let's uh, let's go ahead and get set up um, for uh, what we want to do. Okay, so I'm going to create. Let's we're going to make this cylinder be our sound emitter. Okay, so I'm going to add something to it. I'm going to add a component. We're going to add a new script. I'm going to call this sill sound. Okay. Okay. Boy, that's taken a while. Oh, is Unity frozen on your end and not the screen share? Uh, Unity is frozen. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, uh, I'm gonna have to quit it and restart it, I think. Here we go, wait a minute. Nope, I think, we, I think we're cool. Let's see here. Add component, still sound, okay. okay. That wasn't added already, was it? No, okay. Go to our cylinder, right. Component, still sound, okay. And new script, still sound. Yeah, I accidentally clicked on something wrong. Okay, create an ad. Okay, there we go. All right, so let's go here. And I've double clicked on this and we should be getting our Visual Studio coming up in a second. Aha. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Here we go. Any minute now. Patience, patience, there we go. Cool. All right. So let's go. First of all, still sound will come up here in a second. We're just going to grab all the stuff from beep. Okay. So let me uh, get to my beep script. Okay. Scripts beep.cs. Okay. And what I'm going to do is grab all this down to there. Copy, go to our sill sound script, paste it all in. Okay, yes. Okay, and now we're going to get rid of our beep script. And we're going to go back here and we're going to get rid of our beep object because that would interfere with our cylinder sound. So we go to edit, delete. Ah. Uh, Sorry, I'm not clicking well tonight either. Get it. Delete. Okay. And now let's go back and look at our sill sound. Oops, I just looked at zoom instead. Okay. And let's change a few things here so that we can get a repeating beeping sound going. Okay. So let's first of all take this and let's just make it instead of being 8.7 seconds long, let's just make it be 0 0.15 seconds long. Okay. And let's also add uh, max bang at 0 0.2, okay? And let's go down here and let's see, uh, we wanna do rtcmix dot check bang rtcmix or obgno, okay? And if there is a bang, what we're gonna do is all of this again, all right? Uh, okay. Right. Okay. So uh, this is basically this should be 
essentially familiar now. Okay, we're gonna start by making the beep sound that's only 0.15 seconds long, sending a max bang two tenths of a second in the future. So when that bang happens, it'll make another beep 0.15 seconds long, sends another max bang two tenths of a second in the future. So when we do this now, we should hear, again, it's gonna sound really crunchy, but we should hear a repeated beeping sound. All compiler errors have to be fixed. Uh-oh, I probably mistyped something. Okay. Yes, I forgot. What did I forget? Uh, okay, that's cool. Sorry, guys. Okay. Okay. Hmm. It looks like we have an unbalanced parentheses, perhaps. Oh, dear. Start your amp. Uh, does anybody see anything obviously wrong here? I don't. Uh, I don't either. Dang. This sucks. Okay, let me go back here and tell me what it's saying again. Okay. 45 and 39. It's expecting a parenthesis, okay? It's expecting a semicolon. Ah, idiot. Yes, boy. This is fun. If, sorry. There we go. I forgot it's, it doesn't return a bool. It, it, uh, it was an earlier one that I did. So I have to do that. Now life should be good. You see what I had to change? I had to, the return value of this is not true or false, in which case it would have worked. Um, it's one or zero, like an idiot. So I have to check and make sure if it's one. Now that I've checked that, um, we should be able to go. Let's see, okay. Yeah, that's just nonsense stuff. Okay, so here we go. We should hear grungy beeps now. Ah, we don't hear anything. Boy, I'm just hitting on all, uh, all the good stuff tonight. Why don't we hear anything? Do you remember what I always forget to do? Add audio source. An audio source. Yes. <laughs> Silly me. Oh, this is going well. <laughs> okay, here we go. Life will be good after this, I promise, okay. Yep. Okay, so there's our annoying beeping, okay? Yeah, it sounds really good. Yeah, <laughs> kind of keep that in mind for your, you know, next uh, hardcore party or something. All right, so now what we need to do is set this up. We need to create an observer that will be able to move around. So we're just gonna do the same thing that I did before. I'm gonna create an empty object, okay? And I'm gonna call it observer. Okay, and we're gonna make the main camera a child of that observer, okay? And let's make it be right on the observer, not you know however many feet away from it it is. So we're gonna reset the transform. Okay, so now the main camera and the observer are right there, okay? And then the second thing we wanna do is be able to move the observer around. So I'll grab my observer move script, put it in here, okay? Attach that up to the observer after it compiles, right? Okay, so let's look at the observer and let's set its position to uh, it said, okay. Uh, looks like I didn't drag it properly. Let's put this on the observer, okay. I didn't put it on the cylinder, do I? No, okay. And let's give it a speed of three, a rotation speed of one. 
And just to make sure that we're doing okay, let's check it out. Now you're gonna hear like obnoxious sound again, okay? But here we go. Yeah. Okay, we can move around. I noticed that we need to raise up a little bit because I was like kind of sitting right in the middle of the plane. Okay, and let's put us back a little bit from the, uh, from the cylinder. Let's make, make it go back, say minus three. Okay, so there we are. We got our observer, we got the cylinder. Cylinder's making sound. Now we wanna localize that sound relative to the observer, okay? So here's how we do it, okay? We're going to take, and on the main camera, we are going to attach this other magical script that I've got. Uh, hold on. Here we go called getmytransform.cs, okay? And I'm gonna show you how we're gonna use that, okay? Uh, come on. Oh, I have to add it to my assets first. What a dummy. Okay, there it is. So we're gonna take this get my transform and we're gonna put it right on the main camera. Oh, let me let it compile first, okay? Here we go. Right. Yeah. Come on. There we go. Okay, so you'll see that the script appears, the script has no parameters or anything like that. It's just there for us to use. Well, how are we going to use it? Well, we're gonna go back to our cylinder and we're gonna look at the cylinder sound thing. Actually, we're not gonna look at cylinder sound. We're gonna leave that one like it is, okay? Let me collapse a little bit of this stuff here. We don't need to see the collider, okay? We don't really need to see the audio source per se. I'm gonna add another script below this. Remember. With RT Scenics, if we're going to process sound, which is what we're going to do, we're going to take that beeping sound and we're going to process it through this localized thing. Okay. Um, we have two ways. One is to use that bus config system, which we'll use later on tonight if we get to it. Um, but the other one is that I can create another RT Scenics object below the script that's making the sound and it will take the sound and then process it. That's going to be a little easier to do right now. So I'm going to do that. Okay. And we're going to call this. A uh, new script. We'll call it sill localize. Okay. Create an ad. There we go. All right. Now let's open up that script in a second. Okay. Now, what we're gonna do is we wanna get all the sound stuff to do. So I'm just gonna go back to our sill sound and copy all that over, put it onto my sill localize thing. Okay, cause it's doing sound too. Now we gotta change a few things. First of all, the object number is now one, okay? Second of all, we're not gonna send any notes with this because we're just gonna process the localization with it, okay? Um, down here then, we're not gonna do this, okay? We're just gonna run RTC mix, okay? And because we have sound coming in, we have to set this now to be one. That's something I always forget to do. One for processing sound, okay? All right, well, what are we gonna process? Well. We have to add some more things, okay? The first thing that we wanna do is to be able to find that relative transform so we know where we are, the cylinder, in relation to the observer who's listening to us, okay? So I'm going to create a variable here called get my transform, okay? And I'll call it my relative transform. And then we're going to, in our awake thing, we're going to say my relative transform equals, um, let me see. And this is kind of clever, camera.main. dot get component and we're getting get my transform. 
Okay, what does this do? Well, this variable, my relative transform, is of type get my transform. And that's the thing that we're looking at on the camera. What this does is this actually says to this variable, okay, I now want you to access that part of the camera. So when I use this variable, it will tell me what the transform is and give me the information I need to do that calculation, all right? So here we go, down here, okay? Now, I'm gonna do something cheating here. Um, I already have done the whole stringify thing for the score that we need to use to localize. And rather than going through like trying to work it up in max MSP and all that nonsense, I'm just gonna copy it from my little cheaty thing here. Okay, let me get this going because that would be tedious. I'm gonna take all this. Now we're gonna go back here and I'm gonna explain what this is doing, okay? Okay, here we go. Okay, and let's punch this in a little bit. Okay, what is this doing? All right, well, this is setting up those P fields, okay? And I'm setting up three of them, source X, source Y, and source Z, okay? They're gonna take the information that we get from this get my transform and plug that in to the localized parameters, okay? And these parameters, I'm not gonna go through all of them here. What I will do is point you to the RTC mix page, okay? Where we go to instruments and we go down to delays, localize. This is what all the parameters are, okay? Okay, uh, did you guys just see the screen zoom in when I did that? That doesn't zoom in for you, does it? No, I don't no. think it does. Yeah, okay. I don't see the zoom. Okay, all righty. Well, basically you can look through this, but this is how, this is the information it needs to calculate, you know, the source, the destination, um, how many feet per unity unit there is, that's always just like three, I think. The input channel, the behind the head filter, you can turn it on and off, um, things like that. Um, so again, we're not going to go into this. You can, you can say how wide you want the head to be. You know, usually we just make it like a foot wide. We're, we're kind of slightly egotistical here, okay? But the, the main thing is that we have these three variables, source X, source Y, and source Z, that basically are going to get their information from one of those P field things. And we're gonna do that in update, okay? And what we do in update is we basically create a variable, okay? It's gonna be a vector three variable called um, source pause or the source position, okay? And we're going to say source pause equals, and then here's the fun part, my relative transform dot get transform name object. And that's it. This will then populate that with the X and the Y and the Z coordinates of where we are relative to the observer listener thing, okay? So then all we do is we say rtcmix.setp field, and we say for the first p field, we use source pause.x. Then of course the object number. Okay, then we do the same thing here, rtcmix. Ah, I cannot type tonight. Uh, set p field rtcmix two. Now this is gonna be a little tricky. Pull it out, okay. Uh, 
I was I publish no. Okay. All right. Now I did something a little weird here. I flipped the X, the Y, and the Z. That's because of that weird thing that Unity does where the Z axis and the X axis are in the plane and the Y axis goes up where every other program in the entire world does the X and the Y in the plane and the Z axis go up. So basically I'm just flipping what Unity is giving us to conform to what localize expects, all right? But you know what? We're done. That's all you do. Okay. Now, again, it seemed a little bit messy, and especially when I went through it, I'm going to point out some documentation in a second, but let's first of all see if this actually works. Okay. Because what this should do, let's go back to our Unity thing now. And let's look at our cylinder. Oh, it looks like we have a, uh, an error. Uh, what did I do wrong there? I just mistyped something, I think. Ah, yeah. I forgot to put in this little thing here. Okay. That's the actual syntax for that. All right. Okay, so now this should be clear. Okay. And now I don't know if it's going to come across or not as being localized. We're going to try, like, wandering by the cylinder. And with any luck, you're going to hear the sound in the left speaker as I go by it. Okay. But let's see what it does or not. Okay. Okay. Uh, actually, I'm not hearing a thing, which isn't good. Uh, let me see if I've done this right. Oh, I forgot one thing. Okay. Yes. I did something wrong. Okay, I have to do one more thing on this script. And that is, I have to say, okay, RTC mix. Oh, not in, not in my awake nonsense. Uh, come on. Down here in the start, okay. We have to add one more thing here, okay. And I will just say RTC mix dot. Score. Arg. You know what? I want to do it up here anyhow. Not that it matters, but just conceptually it makes more sense to me. RTC next dot send score. Okay, and the score I have to send says RT input. I believe that's supposed to be comma. Okay, there we go. I forgot to tell it that we're looking for input coming down through the audio stream. Okay, now it should work. Okay, so let's try it first. Right. Yeah. Okay. Are you guys hearing that in stereo? Could you hear it through one uh, one one speaker when I went by it? Uh, kind of. <laughs> let me let me I try can, again. Like I it was like phasing in and out a little bit. I okay. I wasn't hearing it in stereo, but I could hear the head related transfer function, I think. Okay. Okay. Let me see why it's not. Let me see if I can flip stereo on here on Unity real quick. Uh, let's go to here. Uh, that's Zoom. Not, not on Unity on Zoom, I mean. Okay. Let's go to zoom.us. Um, no, I can't. Okay. Uh, here's, here's, here's another demonstration. I'm just going to go flying far away from it. Oh, wait a minute. You guys just disappeared. There you are. Okay. Um, I'm flying far away from it, and you should hear it decrease in amplitude at least, and that'll tell you that it's working. Okay. Uh, let me start playing here. 
Okay, play. Here we go. Is it getting softer? Okay, now I'm going to yes. like run to the head. Okay, now. Now it should be in your left headphone. for it it's working okay <laughs> all right but that's the essence of how localized works okay and you attach it to these different objects now like i said it got a little i, I kind of zipped through stuff there because i wanted you to see sort of what the process was of doing it and you know oh before i go i just want to explain one more thing okay what's happening on the cylinder is of course the sill sound script is making the sound audio source we can actually even move that down here if we want to okay uh, move down. Okay. Then it's going from the sill sound into the sill localized script, where we apply that localization um, or that localized instrument. And that's where the RT input comes in. Now, a lot of times I collapse those two into a single script using that bus config program. Okay. But what I want to show you is over here. Okay. There's first of all, there's the localization um, documentation. But the one that's going to be more important for you is to go to, and I'll, this will be linked into the class, okay? This is where all the tutorials and such go. And if you go to the sound localization with a localized instrument, okay, there's the rtcmix.org, but there's also a video tutorial which takes you through that process I just did. And there's also this text that explains what all these different things are doing, okay? So hopefully that will be of use when you try and start doing this stuff. It's not too tricky once you kind of get the hang of it. And just in general, by the way, this is, uh, I've pointed out this before, but one of the things that you can now appreciate is that this is actually the function re reference that tells you what all of the different RTC mix like that check bang RTC mix, you know, use for, it returns a one if the scheduled bang is present. That's something I conveniently forgot earlier. But um, this is also a pretty good place to kind of, you know, look up more information about the RTC mix functionality within Unity. Okay. All right. So we successfully created a localization Unity project. All right. At this point, I'm going to put this away and we're going to go out into the Max world um, because a, a couple of you mentioned that you'd like to see the process of how I imitated, created that synthetic bird. Okay, and imitated the bird. So I thought that would be a good point also to kind of review, you know, how you can kind of work with RTC next to achieve particular ends you might want to achieve. So let me save this. I'm going to quit Unity. Yeah. Uh, by the way, just because I know like what a flaky person I am about this stuff, um, if if I inadvertently happen to hit quit on Zoom instead of Unity and like the meeting disappears, just log back in, okay? <laughs> all right, anyhow. Uh, all right, here's what I wanna do. First thing I wanna do is, um, I have to go out to my little cheat thing again. Where is that? Do I actually have that here? Yeah. Okay. All right, this is the bird that I imitated in that high definition render. Oh, by the way, I'm making some progress. I'm hoping within a couple of uh, classes that I can show you how you can set up the high definition render pipeline on Macintoshes and take advantage of all that cool fog and stuff like that, okay? But let's get back to the bird. This is the bird that I duplicated um, in, in the initial thing. So this is from the Cornell ornithology thing, which is pretty amazing. Okay, but let's give it a listen. You guys hear that? Yep. Okay, so basically the bird is going squawk, squawk, 
da -da -da -da, does like a four note melody and then it goes Tweet! like that okay um i did mine from memory we had a we had a bunch of wood thrushes near our house where i used to live in roosevelt new jersey um so i got to got to know them pretty well and they, i just i really liked their song so that's what we're going to do we're going to try and imitate that bird okay so let me look down here all right so let me start up max i guess i'll use seven Start, Max, start. Okay, there we go. There's our Max console. Okay, now the thing that I get to do here, which is good, is that I can go to audio status and I can actually set the output to be the Zoom audio device. So that means that hopefully you will now actually hear Max stuff. Oh, Lord. You can't see it, but on my screen, sometimes parts of the Zoom stuff occlude the other things. Okay, all right, so here we go. Okay, I'm gonna do my standard stuff, RTC mix tilde. Uh, let's just make it a mono instrument for now. Okay, oh, actually I should make it stereo since we're gonna be using it in Zoom ultimately, okay. So let me put in a bang. Okay, quick question, are you all seeing this okay? I hope, okay. Yes. Yeah, sorry, you have to like shout it out because I can't see you. Okay, so when I ask questions, just say yes, Brad, or no, Brad, or Brad, you're an idiot. Okay, so let's put in our easy DAC tilde. All right, and here we go. And what we're going to do is kind of a process of building it up, you know, one step at a time. First thing I want to do is save this just in case, and we're going to put it into soft fall week eight. We're going to call this. Um, uh oh dear boy this is annoying stave as yeah we'll call it bird one dot max patch okay okay and then it's back i wonder if i can do that out of there somewhere else i'll put it down here maybe yeah. okay all right so the first thing i'm going to do is basically just create the four notes okay so let me go in here okay and i'm going to set a few parameters first of all okay and this is because rather than you know going through the whole process there's some things i'm just going to say these work okay first of all the duration of each note is about 0.17 seconds okay and that was just a process of listening to it over and over again and we're going to do a, a slightly different thing well let's let's just start with that first okay okay actually let's make our Duration be 0.15 initially. Okay. I'm going to say wavetable. Okay. All right. You can say start your amp. Okay. Let's just say 20, 1, 2, 3, 4 for now. Okay. Okay. 1900, zero. So it's just going to go out our left channel there. And let's. Let's create a wavetable. Uh, let's not create a wavetable. Let's just use a sine wave for now, okay? Now, I'm going to initially set start equal to zero. You're gonna see why I'm gonna do this in a second, okay? And I'm gonna say start equals start plus year. Okay, so that's our first note. Our second note. Okay. Our third note is going to be 2490. And our final note is going to be 1820. Now, a couple of things. Just like with the duration being 0.15, I did a lot of sort of experimenting and I discovered that these notes, these pitches, 1900, 1500, 2490, 1820, sounds pretty wood thrush like okay so it goes beep, 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 kind of like that all right so let's give it a listen and see if in fact it does sound vaguely like our wood thrush and then i'm going to go in and start adding some modifications to this okay so let's turn it on and okay are you guys hearing that you're hearing it probably out of only one ear 
Let me go ahead. Uh, you know what? I'll make it stereo. Zero point five. Zero point five. Zero point five. Okay. Uh, here we go. Can you hear it? Yep. Okay. And it sounds like a very mechanical, like wood thrush. <laughs> sounds like Franken thrush. Okay. Okay, we're going to start to humanize that a little bit, okay? One of the ways we're going to humanize it is that rather than having like no amplitude envelope at all, we're going to shape it so it like fades up and then fades down quickly. So as if the bird is like tweet, 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 tweet like that. And we're going to do it by setting the amp up here. I'm going to set the amp is going to be equal to 10,000. Okay, I'm going to create an amplitude envelope, all right? And it's going to be equal to a make table. And make a line table, a thousand is just the one we always use. At time zero, I want it to be zero. At time five, I want it to be one. At time 99, I want it to be one. And at time 100, I want it to be zero. What kind of an envelope is that, okay? Well, again, this is gonna be relative. This will be scaled to our duration of 0.15, but five hundredths of the way in, it'll fade up from zero to one. Now notice that that's a slightly longer fade up than the fade down of one to a hundred. That goes over one one hundredth of the duration, okay? That's because if you fool around with it, you'll notice the bird has kind of like a slightly soft onset. Again, this is just listening very closely and trying a lot of different things, okay? But there's something else we're gonna to do too. We're gonna to make the duration be longer. And we're gonna create a new variable called skip, which is gonna be what our original duration was, okay? And we're gonna set this all to be start plus skip. Starts plus skip, start plus skip, all right? What have we done here? Well, basically, the duration is slightly longer than when the next note starts. So these are overlapping slightly. So that'll create a little bit of a continuity, but create a little bit of a dip in the bird's sound. So let's listen to what that sounds like, okay? Okay, oh, I forgot to actually do this. Amp times amp end. That'll apply our envelope to the amplitude of the bird. So now when we listen to it, okay, it's still a little mechanical. And that's because I have to do one more thing. I'm gonna explain this, okay. RTC mix defaults by updating its amplitudes a thousand times a second. That's for efficiency purposes. Most instruments don't require the control information to be updated faster than that. Since we're dealing with a very short rise time and a very short decay time, we have to tell RTC Mix, well, update your amplitude every sample, okay? That's why it was still kind of a little bit jagged. Now it should be a little bit not jagged. Yeah, can you hear the difference? Okay. Much nicer. Uh, much nicer. Well, thank you, Reiny. I appreciate that. <laughs> it's nice to have some feedback. Okay. So basically now we've got this sort of happening um, and uh, it sounds vaguely sort of bird-like. However, if you spend your life listening to these birds and imagining them over and over and over again, there's something else that's going on here, okay? And I'm gonna just add that in and then you'll hear it and see why it was a, a big deal, okay? I'm gonna make this be times 0 0.2. I'm gonna make this one be times 0 0.7. I'm gonna make this one be times 0 0.05, okay? What I'm doing is I've noticed that the bird, the first note that it hits is loud. The second one backs off. The third one is kind of loud again. And the fourth one is actually quite soft. Okay. Should that be uh, with the amplitude rather than the frequency? Um, you know what? You're absolutely right. Because that would have been pretty weird sounding. <laughs> it would have been fun to just let it go, Reiny, and just going, you know, that would have made like 
Just a really twisted bird melody, okay? A really deep voiced bird. Yes, yes, doing very odd things, okay? Yeah, fun things that you can do with RTC mix, okay? So there we go. So now I'll hear it. Definitely has a much more bird-like quality to it, okay? Now, I did one more thing which makes almost no difference at all. And in fact, I'm, I'm questioning whether or not it's actually something to include. Um, I did use something other than a sine wave, okay? I said W table equals make table. I'm gonna make a waveform. And I use a square wave only two harmonics in it, which is pretty much close to a sine wave. Um, oops, cancel. Okay, and I'm gonna add that in as a wavetable. And I think I did that because I was trying different waveforms to see if it would change the sound of the bird at all. W table. Okay. So let's listen to that. It sounds about the same. I think I was going things like, ooh, what if I added eight harmonics to it? Would it sound more bird-like? No, it doesn't. Okay. Uh, what if I add like only three harmonics to it? Does it sound more bird-like? No, it doesn't. Okay. So I went back to two. And that still sounded, but frankly, it sounds a lot like the sine wave did, but what the heck, I'll keep it in here, all right? So now participants can now see your screen. Well, I hope so, okay. Are you guys seeing this okay? It's not too small or anything? Fine. Okay, great. All right, uh, so we got the music part. Now remember, if you go back and listen to the bird again, okay. It goes squawk, squawk, little leader, and then it goes like that. Okay. So we got to develop two more things. We got to develop those two squawk, squawk things at the beginning, and then that thing at the end. All right. So let's go and just work on the squawks for a second. Okay. So let me now save this as something else. File save as. Okay. And we're going to call this bird. 2.maxpat, okay? All right, now let's go in here. And we're gonna keep a lot of this stuff because we're ultimately gonna be combining these scripts a little bit. What we're gonna get rid of are these wavetables here, but we're gonna keep all this other stuff about the duration and the things like that, all right? And let me zoom down here to our squawk, all right? Okay. And actually, Let's leave in two of these wavetables, but we're now gonna replace them with squawkiness, okay? So what we wanna do is come up with a way to make a squawk, all right? Now, for this, I'm gonna use, I think we encountered this before. Um, go to my RTC mix documentation, okay, score file. Okay, a squawk is basically you take a note and you kind of like modulate it. <laughs> you, you, you wibble it a whole bunch, okay? That's what we're gonna to do to this. And the instrument that you use to do that or the, 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 the score file control command that you use to do that is make a low frequency oscillator, okay? And basically we tell it a waveform, we give it a frequency and we're gonna give it an, a maximum amplitude for it to like wibble. Okay, so let's go do that, all right? We'll say, we'll keep everything here, and now we're gonna say uh, squawk equals make LFO, low frequency oscillator. Okay. And we're gonna use a square wave at first, okay? Because we want a nice big old squawk. Square, and let's put nine harmonics on it, okay? And let's say we're gonna make it squawk at 20 times a second, okay? And the maximum amplitude 
that we're going to give it. We want it to squawk a lot is we're going to give it 5,000 hertz. So it's going to go from its base frequency up to 5,000 hertz and back again. So we should get a nice <laughs> sort of sound out of that. All right. Um, again, these are just by kind of guessing things. Okay. And I'll show you, uh, I'll show you what it sounds like in a second. Okay. So we're going to go down here. And now for the frequency, because we're jumping up 5,000, I discovered that you had to make the base frequency lower. So I made it 800 hertz for the first squawk. Actually, I made it 800 hertz for, for both squawks, okay? And we're gonna simply add the low frequency oscillator to it, okay? So, except I misspelled it, didn't I? Yes, squawk. And we'll do the same thing here. And the other thing is that even though we're keeping the duration where it was, the actual squawks are a little bit slower than that, okay? So we're going to take that duration and we're gonna multiply it by about 0.3. And again, that was just through listening, okay? So our two squawks are gonna be like, kind of like that, even though they're still gonna be at the same rate as our, as, our, um, as, our, as our Tweety things, okay? So let's hear what that sounds like. Now, I'll warn you, it's not gonna sound very good, okay? And why is that? Oh, okay. Yeah, let's give this a listen, okay? Well, it kind of sounds like a weird chirp, but it's got like this really incredible kind of low frequency thing. Let's start fooling around with some of the parameters. What if we made this squawk frequency be just two, okay? Instead of 20, what would that sound like? Not bad, um, but a little mechanical, okay? What if we made this be smaller? Let's make it be only a thousand hertz, okay? Ooh. What if we then take, took the 20 and moved it back up, okay? Okay, now listen to that. Ooh, starting to sound pretty crunchy there, okay? Well, you know, the more I fooled with this, the more I realized that a square wave is not the way to go, okay? Um, in fact, I'm going to do something different because when the bird is squawking like this, it's not really controlling itself so precisely as you would with a lot a low frequency oscillator. I'm gonna do something else, okay? And I'm gonna say squawk AWK equals make, ooh, now here's gonna be something interesting, random. Okay, and we're gonna say even, I'm gonna explain these in a second. Okay. I'm gonna say, What does this do? Well, this is gonna generate random numbers with a base of 500, okay? It's gonna do it 500 times a second, and it's gonna do it between 4,000 Hertz and 6,000 Hertz. So the more I fooled around with this, and I went back up to 5,000, the more it didn't sound like a squawk at all. And I thought, well, what is the essence here? And I listened to it, and the squawk actually sounded kind of noisy. So that's what led me to the make random thing. And if we go back out to our RTC mix documentation, we'll see make random sets up a periodic random number generator, okay? And you give it the type, even means you're gonna get equal distribution between the minimum and the maximum. So I'm gonna get notes, frequencies between 4,000 and 6,000. And how often the frequency, I'm going to get them 500 times a second, okay? So now we've got this, let's see what that sounds like. Whoa, that's the squawk of my dreams, guys. That's what I was looking for, okay? So that's gonna be the thing that we're gonna start the thing with. And again, I'm not gonna go back and play the bird, but you'll hear it. And then the one ending squawk is kind of like out there. Let's do the ending squawk now, okay? So we're gonna say save as. We'll call this now bird three dot max patch. Okay. And for this one, 
we had such good success with that make random. I'm just going to keep it, okay? And let me go here. And what did I modify then, okay? Now, this is the opposite thing. This is where the duration of that final thing is actually longer than the initial notes. So I'm gonna multiply it by three, okay? And again, the reason that I'm keeping these set is because we're gonna combine these all into one script that will do the bird, okay? So I don't wanna be modifying them, you know, willy nilly because then I'll have to go back and modify them in my script, okay? So what have we done here, okay? Um, basically, like I said, this is kind of out there. So I'm going to say that our base frequency, instead of being just 800 hertz constantly, is going to be a random number between 100 hertz and 700 hertz. And then we're going to add that squawky randomness to it, OK? And we only make one. We don't make two, OK? And that should do it for that squawk. Let's hear what it sounds like. OK. Is that the one that I wanted? Okay, dear time, Yeah. Okay. So now we've got all the components. Okay. We can combine them all into one. And rather than me typing it in, I have one that I have pre made for you. So we're going to take a look at that. Let's go out here. And the one that I want is, what did I miss out here? I think this is the final squawk. Yeah, yeah, that was all okay. Okay, so the bird's workup finished is this guy, which, let me show you how I did it, okay. All the stuff is there that I had before. Those two are the initial two squawks I worked up. Those are the four notes. And here's the final squawk. And I did modify the amplitude envelope after kind of listening to it and thinking about it a little bit. So I did modify it a little bit for that final squawk. And this is now what our wood thrush sounds like. which isn't bad. The other thing that I've added that I forgot to point out to you guys is that I modified the amplitude of the squawks because if you listen to the original bird, they are quite low compared to the tones that the bird puts out, okay? So here we go. We got this nice squawky bird, okay, right? However, if you listen to the thrush recording, it does it differently each time, right? So I actually did this. Oh wait, that's not the one I wanted to show. Okay, I wanted to show this one. I made a whole bunch of different RTC mix birds and in each one, the parameters that I'm using have changed slightly, okay? So that each one of these is a little different. Here's the one we just did. Hear it? Okay. So we basically have a whole repertoire of different like cheeps and squeaks from this thing. All right. What I'm going to do is now put them into a single script that will then randomly choose one of those eight different tweedy things, eight, seven, seven different tweedy things. Okay. And that looks like this. Okay, hit this first and then. So you can hear it's kind of choosing randomly. Now, if I was more kind of, you know, being like a better person, um, I would make it so it wouldn't play too identical to each other back to back, but I'm gonna live with it, all right? now. There's one thing I need to point out. Notice that there's this go script zero and go script one. 
That's because I actually am triggering two different scripts on this, okay? The first one has all this stuff that's gonna be constant across the birds, okay? Um, it's basically setting up the amplitude envelope. I don't need to do that every time I trigger a bird. The second one, go to script one, is what happens when I trigger a bird, okay? And basically, I generate a random number between zero and seven, and then I check if it equals zero, I do that bird. If it equals one, I do that bird. And that was basically taking each one of those individual scripts and combining, combining them all into one big script here, okay? And that's essentially gonna be what I import into Unity, all right? So how are we doing on time? Pretty good, pretty good, okay? All right, so let me let me close this guy off. All right, and um, this presents a little bit of a, not a problem, but it's just kind of an annoyance. Okay, let's go ahead and I won't do the whole thing, but let's pretend like we're going to put this into Unity. Okay, all right. Um, let me see. Um, how's, how's your brains feeling? I mean, are you getting too like burned out with a bunch of stuff here? Again, it's kind of different with Zoom. Um, again, the good news is I'm recording all of this um, and the bad news is it's, it's Zoom. Um, yeah, let me, we got a half an hour left. Let me go ahead and I'm gonna do what I was intending to do and we'll get through this, okay? Um, I'm gonna go back to Unity, all right? I'm gonna create a, a new project. All right. Okay, so we're going to say new. And we'll call this Unity Birds. Okay. Oh, it's actually only one bird, so we'll say just say bird. Okay. And what I wanted to do with this, okay. Is let's get this going here. Here we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. There we go. Yay. Right. Okay. Here comes Unity. Okay. Let me make it so that I can see what I'm doing on my screen with all the other stuff that Zoom has plopped up there. Okay. There we go. All right. Um, let's save this. Um, what I'm going to do is basically, I want to do a real quick terrain. Okay. So let me bring up the package manager here. Okay. And fetching the packages. All right. And I want to basically go to the unity registry. Actually, I think I have it downloaded my assets already. Okay. So let's go down here. Whereas terrain tools, okay? Yeah, let's uh, yeah, let's go ahead and put that in, okay? So we select it and we say import. Okay, and it has all these great terrain things, you know. Right. I should have done this ahead of time. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, but there, good. It did do it. All right, and let me see if I need to do one other thing here. Let's go to our Windows, our package managers, and let's go to the, the Unity registry and see if there's something else I need to add here. Uh, looks like uh, I need to do one more thing. 
edit package manager. Ah. Project settings. Package manager. And we want to enable the preview packages, I understand. Okay. Because of the package I'm looking for that I need to add is. Okay. Down here, terrain tools. Okay. And let's install that. Okay. Because what I put in was the um, terrain tools assets that gives us all the different textures and things like this. But this gives us all the cool brushes and things like that. Frankly, I probably didn't need to put these in because the, the plain Unity has a number of brushes, not that many. Um, but um, it's probably a good idea to do this. Plus, it's a cool thing to just go ahead and put this on the video too, All right? So essentially, you get the train tools package, uh, which is a preview package. That's why I had to enable preview packages. That gives you a bunch of the stuff that you then use the train tools sample pack to kind of um, work, okay? So it's reloading the script assemblies. It should be ready to go here in a second, okay? Here we go. Great. Oh, it's reserializing the assets. That's a good thing to do always. Okay, so we're all installed. Let's go ahead and create ourselves a terrain. All right, so let's go up here to our um, game objects, 3D objects, uh, terrain. Okay, there it is, okay. And let's go ahead and bring it out here. Get our overview of the terrain. You know, I probably should have reset it so it's not quite as big as this, but what the heck, okay? All right. That is pretty big, but we're gonna go ahead and have fun with it, okay? So let's, uh, let's um, paint some terrain here, okay? And we're going to paint the, the raise and lower terrain. All right, let's choose a nice fun thing here. Okay, let's make it um, a lot bigger. Oh, you know what? That train really is kind of hideous. Um, yeah, it's going to take us forever to do stuff. Let's uh, let's back out of here. Okay, and let's go to game object and let's uh, bring up our terrain tools. Okay. All right. Where's our camera? There we are. Okay. Right. Okay, let's um, go up here and under window. We're gonna go to shoot, where's our train? Train, right, train toolbox, okay. Yes, and let's, instead of making it being 500, let's make it be 100. 100, let's make it be only a 50 feet high that we can make this thing, okay? So we're gonna create that terrain. All right. Yeah, that's a little bit more workable for our purposes, okay? Okay, we go here, we select our terrain group. All right, all right, now we've got a nice brush here. We can raise our terrain. Let's create like a nice kind of, you know, sort of nice terrain here. Oh, I think I missed, did not set correctly one of the uh, sizes of this. Ah, damn it. There's a way to kind of just redo it on the fly, but I'm not good at that, okay. So let's go up here to window, terrain toolbox again. Okay, oh my gosh, yes. The width was a little bit big, 500, 100, 100, okay. Now we're gonna create it, okay. Warning, we're trying to create grouping ID, continue, okay. Hopefully, I think we need to uh, delete that one, okay, yeah. All right, now let's zoom in on this, okay. Um, where's our main camera? It's way over there. All right, let's go zooming in, okay. Okay, let's select our terrain. Okay, now, yeah, we're gonna make some mountains here, okay. 
create a cool terrain, okay? All right, so we create a terrain. Let's now paint a texture or two onto it. Okay, so we're gonna go here to paint texture. Okay, and we need to add a layer, okay? So let's go down here to, there's the layers. Hmm. Paint texture. There we go, layers. Okay, list is empty. We're gonna add a layer. Okay, let's add rock first because it's a rocky place. Okay, there's our rocks, okay. Let's add, uh, what's a good one to add next? Um, we'll just add some moss, okay? Because what the heck, okay? So I'm gonna add a bit of moss here and select it. Moss, moss, select it. Moss, moss, why is the moss not being added here? Okay, come on moss. Shoot, oh, I am adding it. I think my strength is pretty low, okay? Yeah, I'm gonna like rub it in here. Okay, there we go. Got some good moss, okay? All right, yes. Just put a bunch of moss all over the place, okay? Let's make my strength be, like, what's my size? Let's make my strength be larger, okay? Oh yeah, there's some good moss. Now I'm getting moss, okay. All right, so I got some nice mossy rocks. Um, next thing I wanna do is add some trees because wood thrushes actually like trees, okay? So no trees are defined. Oh golly, I gotta bring in some trees, okay? Uh, how are we doing on time? Pretty good. This, uh, this won't take too long, okay? Let's go back to my package manager again, okay? And I'm gonna look at the ones that I have in my assets. And I have, I have a bunch of trees here, but I'm gonna use the... Um, standard assets for Unity. Okay, we're going to import them. Okay, and this is a case where I want to like strip out a bunch of the stuff that comes with it, okay? Like we're not gonna use any sample scenes, okay? We're not gonna use any 2D stuff, okay? We're not gonna use any cameras. We're not gonna use any characters. We're not gonna use any cross-platform input. Okay, we're not gonna use any of the editor stuff. We're not gonna use the effects. We are gonna use the environmental stuff. No fonts, no fonts for me on this one. No particle systems. Someday, they are so cool. Okay, no, no none of that. No prototyping, no utility. I believe no vehicles. That's all. So we're gonna just import the trees. Here they come. Trees, 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 okay. There you go. That's close to the end. Yes, okay. So now we should have some trees here. So let's go back to our terrain, okay? And let's uh, define some trees, okay? So we're gonna edit some trees, we're gonna add a tree, okay? And we should have tree prefabs. Let's look and see what we have here. Let's put up, uh, let's make these, let's make this a conifer for us, okay? So we use a conifer desktop. Okay, All right, we'll add that tree. And now, whoa, they're big trees. I forgot the scale is a little bit weird here on these trees, okay? Let's go down to the, 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 the tree size, okay? Uh, where do we go here? Paint trees. Uh, tree heights, okay? Yes, take that way down there. Now we'll put in a bunch of trees, okay? There's our nice forest, our wood thrush will be happy. Okay, so we've got this kind of nice sort of thing happening here. Um, what we're gonna do now is add, oh boy, uh, how are we doing on time? We're doing okay. Um, there's one thing I wanna show you, okay? The next step would be to add an observer that we can move around. 
um, and we all know how to do that, okay? And then we're going to add an object that will be, be the object that will be generating our wood thrush notes, okay? Um, I'm gonna skip right to that, okay? Because I wanna show you something about how we're gonna deal with the RTC mix script, okay? So let's go ahead and create what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this up and then I'll put it up on web on the web for you to kind of take a look at if you want. I'm going to create a 3D object and um, let's create a capsule so we can actually see our bird. Okay. All right. And let's put it in the middle. Okay. Where and let's go to our capsule. Oh, oh, put it way back there. That's right. Because zero, zero, zero is actually over there. Okay. Um, Let's go ahead and work on it over here and then we'll put it into our forest at some point, okay? But let's select this capsule and let's call it, you know, our bird, okay? So we're gonna add the stuff that we need to add to this in order for it to make sound, okay? We're going to add a new script. We're gonna call it bird sound. Great and add. So now we've got the bird sound script, okay? Uh, let's go ahead and get our RTC mix stuff set up for it. Um, again, like I said, I was gonna be kind of duplicating things. So we're duplicating stuff now. Okay, bring in our package, boom. Okay, import everything, boom. Go up to our edit and our project settings. Go to the player. And we have to make it so that it will be happy with unsafe code. Boom. Okay, so that's good. Let's take our our RTC mix and let's put in our RTC mix main here. Okay, so that's happy. And now let's go back to here and let's go to our bird sound. All right, and we're going to grab the stuff from beep, we're not even gonna bother with doing the beep right now, okay? How are you guys holding up? I mean, again, I'm just talking to myself. Uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a slog tonight um, because of the Unity thing. I'm gonna to have to kind of rethink some of what I'm planning to teach um, if the strike continues. All right, here we go. All right, now let's look at our beep here. Scripts, beep.cs, grab all this that we need. Okay, and go to our bird sound. Put it in there. So now it would be beeping. We don't want it to beep. What we want it to do is make a bird sound. All right, now here's the deal. This is what I wanted to show you. Let's go back out to Max MSP, okay? And let's open up that final thing that I had done, all right? Here we go. Not that. Open, recent catcher, birds one combined, okay? And we're gonna, we'll deal with this script later, okay? But we're gonna like bring in this entire script. Now, here's the problem, okay? If I do my typical thing where I copy this out and I go to my favorite program, the scoralizer, I paste this in and then hit Control D. This is what it generates. which will work. And I can put that into my Unity project, but it's a whole bunch of gunk, okay? And if we had to go back and try and like, you know, edit it for some reason, that would be a problem area. There is a different way, okay? And that's what I wanted to show you, all right? Let's go back out to our Max MSP project, okay? And we're gonna bring this up and I'm gonna save this file, okay? Save as, okay. And I'm gonna put it up here in my main week eight area thing so I can find it, okay. And let me 
turn this down. I'm going to save this as bird1b.txt because 1a is going to be the first one that I did, but we're not going to do with that now. So I now have out here a text file, which is basically that whole thing. Okay. How do I get that into unit? Um, well, this is where it's actually kind of neat. Um, this is what you need to do. Okay, hold on, I need to look at something here. Yes, okay. Go back out to my unit project. Actually, I'm gonna to go to this bird sound and I'm gonna declare a new variable here. I'm gonna call it public and you'll see what that does if you don't already. We're gonna call it public text. Text, text asset, that's the one we want. Public text asset, we call this bird1b text. Call it bird1b score. No, we'll call it bird1b text, okay? Okay. And down here, in the start thing, Okay, we're going to get rid of this. We're going to say um, bird1b text equals. No, oh, we're going to say this. We're going to say string bird1b score equals bird1b text dot text. And we can say our scenics dot send score bird one b score. What's going on here? Well, a couple of things. Okay. First of all, we're going to need to have that text file in our project. So let me go back out here. I'm gonna take this and bring up Unity. Which is right there. I'm gonna put this text file right out here. I'm gonna put this text file in our assets. I'm gonna put this text file, ah, you know what? I think it has to be called T E X T. I'm going to try and put that in there. No, it doesn't. All right. I'm going to put this text file. Ah. Come on, Unity. Dang, guys. It looks like my computer is getting a little bit hosed here. Well, yeah, you know what? I could crash. I could. Stop Unity. Let me show you what's going to happen. By putting that text file in there, I can actually, this public text asset, when that script shows on Unity, there would be a slot there where I would be able to put that text file in. Okay, what this allows me to do is then access the score part of that text without having to do the scoreizer. Okay, and this will then do it. And the, and the cool thing is that I can actually edit that text file from directly within C Sharp um, Visual Studio here. Um, yeah, but you know what? We're going to do this next time.
because we're about out of time and my brain is about to die. So, and Unity is about to die too. So let me do this, okay, force quit. Uh, Unity not responding, yes, we know that. Okay, I think it just got kind of sad. Okay, let's quit this. Okay, and uh, next time we're gonna pick this up kind of where it was and um, go from there. I'm gonna turn off recording now.